I'd like to ask you about the Woodward interviews. Did President Trump intentionally mislead the American people about the threat of COVID, a pandemic that has now cost the lives of nearly 200,000 Americans? Absolutely not. Um, this president, at a time when you're facing insurmountable challenges, it's important to express confidence. It's important to express I calm. Always play it down. Is playing it down? Is that is that expressing calm? It well, seems dishonest. It seems. Can like you read the rest of the quote? That's how much they put in there. Oh, you excluded the last part. Um, Don't play the full thing on 60 please, Minutes please on do, Sunday. Do you deny please that do he explain. misled the American please, people about the Of course I deny of that. Pandemic. And he makes clear that he doesn't want to see chaos, by the way, is the second part of the quote, which you failed to read. Um, the president, just days after having this discussion um, with Bob Woodward, said this from this podium on March 30th. He said, I do want them to stay calm. We are doing a great job. If you look at the individual statements, they're all true. Stay calm. Um, it will go away, but it's important to stay calm. So this president does what leaders do, good leaders. It's stay calm and resolute at a time when you face an insurmountable challenge. So That's what this president has It will not appear that the president lied to the American public about the threat posed by COVID. The president has never lied to the American public on COVID. The president's been very, the president was expressing calm and his actions reflect that. Uh, on January 6th, uh, the CDC issued a Wuhan travel notice before any confirmed U.S. cases, among another a number of other actions. And I'd refer you to Dr. Fauci, who said that this president has an impressive response. I can't imagine under any circumstance that anyone could be doing anything more. That is the record of this president. John. Kelly, but how do you, how do you square the, the president's words to Woodward when he said, uh, this is a very delicate one. It's also more deadly than even your strenuous flu. This is deadly stuff. And then just two weeks after he told Woodward that, he said, this is a flu. This is like a flu. Um, and of course, he also said it was going to quickly go to zero. But that, that, that seems to be in direct contradiction to what he told Woodward. Well, the president was listening to his medical experts because you also have at the same time period Dr. Fauci, who said this, um, asking, asked if the seasonal flu was a bigger concern. He said this on February 17th. So right now at the same time, people are worrying about going to a Chinese restaurant. The threat is that we have in this country. We're having a pretty bad influenza season, particularly dangerous for our children. So he was reflecting that point. And again, days later, in a briefing, he said, the statements I made are this, I want to keep the country calm. That is what leaders do, and that's what President Trump but, does. But in that statement, Fauci is not comparing the two. He's not saying coronavirus is, it was like a he was at, It was a COVID interview, and he was asked about seasonal flu vis-a-vis -vis COVID, saying exactly what the president said. And in fact, the president was taking it more seriously because on the tape, he noted uh, that flu could be worse, and he was taking action to address it. Um, once again, context matters that zero reported COVID cases, the CDC was implementing public health screenings. House Dems were preparing to file their first briefs in impeachment. One reported case, CDC, um, when there was one reported case, the CDC was activating an emergency operations center while Pelosi was releasing a statement criticizing McConnell over impeachment. On January 31st, the president issued a travel ban um, on China, one that the former vice president called xenophobic. That's what Democrats were doing while this president was acting, and his actions reflect the seriousness with which he took COVID-19. Yes, really, Jeff. You quoted Dr. Fauci. Dr. Fauci is also apparently on the record saying of President Trump that his attention span is like a minus number and his sole purpose is to get reelected. That's according to veteran journalist Bob Woodward. I think the bottom line here is that the president, by his own admission in private on the record, acknowledged the depth of this crisis and yet told the American people something very different. How is that, at its core, not an abject betrayal of the public trust? The president has always been clear-eyed with the American people. He was always clear-eyed about the lives we could lose. Uh, again, from this podium, he acknowledged that this was serious back in March, that 100,000, 200,000 lives could be lost. Um, and with regard to Dr. Fauci, you're referring to a quote he allegedly told Bob Woodward, and I can give you quotes that we can all play on loop and video of him, saying that this response was impressive and he can't imagine anyone under any circumstance doing anything better. Uh, Dr. Fauci saying this, I can just tell you the president, uh, the first and only time I went and said, you need to do mitigation strongly, the response was yes, we will do it. The second time I went with Dr. Burks to the president and said 15 days to slow the spread are not enough, we need to go to 30 days. Obviously there were a lot of people who had problems with that because of potential secondary effects. Nonetheless, the president went with the health recommendation. So there's a long litany of praise from Dr. Fauci and you're referencing something he allegedly told Bob Woodward. It's, it's on tape. It's on tape, Kaylee. Well, I'm, reading, I'm tape. reading 
to you what Dr. Fauci has said very publicly for all to see, and we can all play those video clips. I can get them in your inbox. The yes, Trump Zeke. On February 7th said it's deadly stuff about coronavirus. In private, on the record. In public, though, February 28th, he says, one day, it's like a miracle, it will disappear. Well, it's, one it's, one, it's one thing to, as a, as a public figure, not to try to incite panic. It's a very different thing, respectfully, uh, to lie and mislead the American people uh, about, no uh, was, about a crisis no one, that has claimed nearly 200,000 American no lives. No one is lying to the American people. One day COVID will go away. I think we can all hope for that day. Uh, we will have a vaccine because of this president tearing through bureaucracy to get a safe and effective vaccine. One day it will go away. That is a fact. It is not inciting fear. This president has expressed calmness from this podium, mobilized the greatest mobilization of the private sector since World War II, uh, got more tests than any country in in the world on COVID, a vaccine, which by the way, it'll be a record for a novel pathogen. The timing of this vaccine, should we get it by the end of the year or should we get it even three years, which was the timing of Ebola? This president has done an unprecedented job dealing with COVID, um, one that Dr. Fauci even acknowledged. And like I said, I will get you that clip to your inbox. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, okay, Kaylee, uh, just the, you mentioned a few minutes ago that this was an insurmountable problem. I think that that's a, quite a point of dispute. If you look around the world, the United States leads the world in, in confirmed cases, in, in deaths from COVID-19. So doesn't the president have bare responsibility for that record as well as the testing and, and the vaccine development that you're just talking about? No, when you've looked at the rest of the world, um, in particular the case fatality rate in the United States is about 3%. Uh, the world is 3.3%, the UK 11 0.9%, France 8.8%, Belgium 11.2%, and um, you can go through the various Western world countries that have dealt with COVID, and we've done a very good job. The case fatality rate notes that, and that's a testament to our therapeutics that the president has navigated. The, US is still, is still very the case common. fatality rate is the metric that shows how well our response has done with therapeutics, and we are leading the world um, in having the lowest case fatality rate. It's a very important metric and one that's a testament once again to a president who ripped through barriers, getting us from desivir, convalescent plasma, and other very good working therapeutics.